I'm Mike Delahousin. And I'd like to thank all the millions and millions of people at home watching and to Miss Cosgrove. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to talk about various health related issues and nutrition, benefits of exercise, and why eating healthy is good for you. Coach, what are the benefits of exercise? My main reason that I exercise at this point in my life is really just to stay healthy, especially with my heart. Heart health is so important the older you get. And I know we have a lot of young viewers out there and they're more geared to the physical aspect and the physical appearance. And, and that's important too, you wanna to look a certain way. Um, I, I just think that exercise in general, it, it's more of a lifestyle choice, okay? It can help you mentally. It can help you emotionally. You know, there are a lot of people that deal with depression and exercise can, can really help combat those type things. I really think that exercise, another reason I do it, it gives me more energy. When I exercise in the morning, I have more energy levels throughout the day. And it also helps me sleep at night. I get a better night's sleep because I exercise. I just think that being active is so important. And guys, I, I, I can tell you from experience, okay, it's not hard just to get up and, and be physical. Do a little something, 20 minutes a day, okay? Don't be that guy that has to park in the closest spot in Walmart. If you have to park in the back, park in the back and walk. All right, Coach, you've been talking about the benefits of exercise, but I'm sure our viewers want to know what is our normal exercise routine throughout the week. Yeah, uh, Coach D, that's a really good question. Um, my uh, routine late, our, I'm sorry, our routine lately, uh, Coach D and I will get to school in the morning after we perform our duty because we're always on time, Mr. Blood. We normally get first hour and we'll start uh, we do a 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 routine. We we'll start with 50 jumping jacks, 40 squats, 30 push-ups, 20 mountain climbers, and then 10 burpees. Then we take about a minute break, and then we do that again. Okay, so we do two rounds of that. And after that, we normally pick like a body weight, like if we want to do arms, okay? We have dumbbells that we keep in our office, and we'll, we'll do biceps and triceps, and we'll normally we we'll normally do about three sets of, of curls, just, just standing bicep curls. Probably about, uh, we do about maybe 25 to 30 pounds and we do try to do about 15 reps each time. And then we'll go to triceps. We'll do tricep dumbbell press, uh, same thing. We try to do about 15, 15 reps, 12 to 15. We'll keep it in that range. And then after that, Coach D really likes uh, doing the uh, hammer curls. So we'll do hammer curls same thing probably about 15 times we really try to do a lot of high reps we're not we're not really trying to get really strong we're just trying to kind of maintain it at, at this point and then we'll do tricep dips and you can do that with a chair and we'll do probably like three sets of that basically to fill you as many as we can all right coach we've been talking about our exercise routine but i'm sure our viewers also want to know how many days a week do we exercise <laughs> we well we normally try to do workout every day you know, being that we're physical education teachers, we like to try to provide a, and show a, a good example for the students about being active. And the faculty as well. Correct, correct. Um, what we normally do, um, we really work out, we're off first hour, so we probably have about a good 45 minutes and we, we try to do something for at least 30, 35 minutes. You know, we drink our coffee in the morning and everything, but then after that, we, uh, we probably, yeah, at least at least five days a week and then if, if we miss because of a, like on a game day sometimes we might not work out because we don't want to be sweaty the rest of the day if we're leaving right after school um but other than also it, it kind of goes by how we feel if we feel tired or correct. fatigued we just we just skip that day and i think it's been important to listen to your body like, like this past week we worked out monday and tuesday and tuesday we had a pretty good leg workout that's right and then Wednesday, we both kind of looked at each other and said, we're really not feeling it today. So we, we stopped, okay? Then we, we started back again on Thursday. So that, that's, that's another important thing. You go by what your body tells you. If you're hurting, take a day off. 
okay? One, one missed workout is not the end of the world, okay? It's if you continue to sit and not be active for weeks, okay? Just trying to be active, okay? If you can, honestly, if you can work out three to four times a week, it's not bad, okay? Five, even better, okay? Some people try to go a full seven days, that's kind of pushing it, okay? Younger people, I can understand you can do that. But you know, like Coach D, he's getting a little older, okay? So it's kind of hard for a guy of his age to work out seven days a week. Also a guy like Coach Longclose, you know, he can barely walk, you know, and he's a PE teacher. So we probably tell him maybe once, twice a week at max to work out. But other than that, yeah, I, we, we usually try to get at least five days a week. You gotta know your body and you gotta know your limitations and, and you know, kind of know when to shut it down. Right. Coach, if you don't have a gym membership, what are some exercises or routines that people can do? That's a, that's a real good question. Um, talk about this a lot in our health classes. Um, nowadays, especially uh, with the young kids, there's, there's so many different ways technology-wise. You have your cell phones and you have all these different apps, Google, YouTube. Uh, YouTube is, is a good tool to use. You can just YouTube and search exercise programs, exercise routines. Um, some good workout apps that we use is the Daily Workout Fitness Trainer. And it'll give you different options. Like if you wanna work out, they have a 10 minute trainer, a 20 minute trainer, or a 30 minute trainer. And it has different categories. Like it has a cardio workout, a yoga workout, an ab workout, arm workout, a butt workout, cardio, and a full body workout. And uh, I, I really like those. Um, we really, we did those a lot with the uh, PE classes at the beginning of the year. With That's the right, yeah, yeah. And sure, yeah. I, I thought that it transitioned well. You, you did a, a lot of different body weight exercises because if you're at home, lots of times you don't have dumbbells, okay? And if, if you don't have dumbbells, I mean, what's the next best thing? Your body weight. Body weight, okay? absolutely. Good old fashioned push-ups, crunches, okay? Dips, lunges jumping jacks there's so many different exercises out there you can do and you can be creative and you can use these apps and you can put together a pretty good routine also if you're at home you can buy the basic dumbbells anywhere 5 10 15 20 pounds and sometimes you can get a good workout with just those and also the resistance bands are another good good, way, good way to get a workout in so there's different ways you don't have to have a gym membership no. to work out at home okay um, even just like we said, walking is a good, is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. There's so many different ways. And like I said, with technology nowadays, you have so many different avenues to get a good workout. So you just have to search, get on your phone and look, and it's, it's out there if, if you really want to find it. How do we make it fun? See, and that's, that's a good question because that's the key. Exercise shouldn't be like a, a job or a chore. It, it needs to be fun. You need to be excited about it about exercise. Absolutely. Okay. And personally, I, I like to switch things up. I like to exercise with people that I, I like being around. Don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> but like, for instance, we were on the big karate kid kick. Absolutely. And it came back in. Everybody's karate talking kid. about Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. So what did we do? We started Googling and looking for karate workouts and we started doing karate exercises okay and at first we felt kind of goofy and weird doing it but towards the end of the workout we noticed how much we sweated and we were like hey, we're really burning some gallons and we okay. did so that, that's something fun also music okay we we like to uh, when he comes in I, I, I like to have the music blaring in the gym a rocky theme or doing something I'm jumping rope and trying to just, just switch it up and, and, and changing things up. And, and seeing him get after it motivates me to get after it. Right, and especially for, for the kids, we try to make them think that you know, exercise is fun. It can be fun. You, you have to enjoy doing it, okay? If you enjoy doing something, you're gonna wanna do it more. And, and that's what we try to incorporate with the, with the younger kids, okay? Um, another thing that we do is get a bunch of people together and, and, and just have fun with it. Like, for instance, 
Coach Adams. Coach Adams is fun to be with. Okay, we, we, we like getting her involved in, in exercise. Even Coach Lampos at times, okay? He has his own own way of exercising. He likes to ride his bike, okay? Coach 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 Tyler Stevens is, a, is another guy. He, he likes to do his thing. He's more into the weights, okay? Even uh, Coach Craig Stevens. Craig, yeah. Yeah, Craig, Craig does a good job. Craig is more of a, a yoga guy, but, you know, Craig does a good job with that, and we kind of get some things from him. From Absolutely, time to time. And, we, and we incorporate those, right, those yoga right. moves you know, into most of our exercises you know, at times. Um, even, like, for yoga, okay? I, I didn't like yoga at first, but now the more that I do it, I really think it's fun. Okay, do I look awkward at times doing it? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm, I'm getting to understand why it's important and, and just it's something different, okay? And sometimes doing something different can be unique and it can be fun. And, and that's the thing, have fun when you exercise. It's not a punishment, it's not something bad. And that's when we try to get the young kids to understand. When we do our exercises at the beginning of the period, it's not to punish you, it's to get, get it in your head, in, in your mind that, hey, this is a lifestyle. We want you to be healthy. We want you to be active. I, can't, I cannot stress enough how important it is to be healthy. You have one life to live. Make the best of it. Take care of yourself. Be active. This king cake looks so good. I it's cannot wait to eat this. Hey, man. <laughs> Cake. It's Mardi Gras. It's that time of the year. You can't be doing that, man. Well, what do you want me to eat? Here. Eat this. An orange? Yeah. Well, okay. better for you. Okay. Uh, Come on, I, I, I can see that. I can see that. Thank you, Coach. Thank You're you welcome. for saving me from eating this king cake. Yeah. I don't want this. Yeah, just throw it away. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I mean, we just got to work out and then I'm going to eat that. Yeah, you can't eat that. All right. I'll, I'll eat the orange. So, Coach D. I have a question for you. Um, how do you clean up your diet? Because you saw I was about to eat that king cake. So how do I, how can I clean that up? Yeah, you want to eliminate any kind of empty calories. Okay, so if you have a nice salad and you're pouring all kind of salad dressing, throw the salad dressing away. Put tomatoes, maybe some fresh fruit on that salad, and that eliminates the empty calories. And that's one way you can clean it up. The next is eliminate junk food like king cakes or potato chips that are high in calories and replace it with healthy fruit. You know, what kind of apple is this? Pink lady, maybe? You know, I think Coach D, this might be a honey crisp. It's honey crisp. Um, a little short guy turned me on to these apples, Coach Paul Umphos, and they are very, very good. Very good. Honey crisp apples, people, are the way to go. So you said about salads and not putting dressing. Is there any kind of healthy alternatives instead of salad dressing that you can put like a healthier version of a salad dressing? Yeah, olive oil. Um, oh. Some people put vinegar. Some people just put a light salt and pepper and that kind of dresses up the salad. Um, I wouldn't put a whole lot of the um, salad dressings because that's just adding calories to your meal. If you almost just, if you haven't right. taken a healthy salad, and you add all this stuff to it, now it's boom, it's like a Big Mac. So a lot of people think, well, I'm eating salad, I can put dressing, it's healthy. But that's not the case, right? That's not the case, no. You're just, you're almost consuming like you're consuming a hamburger when you do that. I got you. Okay. All right, Coach D, what are um, some healthy alternatives? Snacks and drinks? Well, of course, if you're trying to eliminate the processed stuff, fruits, like we said earlier, is also probably one of the better alternatives, but if you don't have access to fruit for whatever reason, um, they make Velveeta crackers. Those are great. Um, they read about a B plus. Um, oh, you just, are, you're talking about the uh, good app, people out there, Fujikate. Fujikate. Fujikate is a good app. It actually has a scanner and you can scan the barcode and it'll tell you, it'll give you a grade on the food. Something that we use throughout the day when, we, when we're eating certain snacks. And it makes it fun. It makes nutrition fun. It really does. And so kind more is, a, is another healthy alternative. Um, your regular raisins, also a good alternative. Pretzels, a good alternative. And even peanut butter. Okay, what about if I'm, if I'm that guy that I have to have 
my Coke throughout the day. I love drinking Coke. And we see a lot of kids drink Coke, so that is a great question. The best alternative to that, honestly, is good old H2O. And Coach, how many, I mean, how many glasses of water should we get throughout the day? They say that the recommendation is eight glasses of water per day. Um, you want to you wanna try to eliminate the Coke products, honestly. They're just loaded with sugar. Right, even even a good old thing like a root beer. Everybody loves a good root beer every once in a while, right, Coach? Right, and you're looking at the Barch root beer, and right off the bat, I noticed the sugar count, 44 grams of sugar. Wow. And then the other thing, the calories, 160 calories in this Barch root beer. You're looking at about 30 minutes of high intense cardio to burn this off, okay, before you burn your fat stores that are already there in your body. So you basically you're telling me if I, if I could limit or basically stop drinking the Coke, root beer, Sprite, any of those kind of type drinks, that I'm gonna take the sugar out, out of my diet, right? Yeah, you're, you're taking all those refined sugars out of your diet and you're gonna see some, some gradual um, weight loss from that. Maybe five, maybe I've seen it to where 10 pounds can be lost from just eliminating Coke products from a diet. Okay. Now, a lot of people, a lot of athletes think that you know, drinking Gatorade throughout the day is the way to go. I mean, what is the benefit of drinking a drink like Gatorade or, or even Powerade? Right, well, so Gatorade and Powerade, if you're out on the football field, are, are great ways to get sodium and electrolytes into your body. But if we're not in heat and we're just regularly walking into school, it's a cool day, we're not exercising, we're not um, sweating, we want to stick with water. It's the, it's the best way to go. Still eliminate the sugars that are in the Gatorade and stick to just water. Okay. Yeah, because I, I can remember as a young athlete, I, I thought drinking Powerade was was the route, was the way to go. You know, and, and I, I didn't realize, with, you know, with all the sugars and, and everything in, in, involved in it, you know. Yeah, if we're doing vigorous exercise, we want to incorporate Gatorade during those exercises. Right. But before, the best hydration is obviously water. Right. And especially for you athletes out there, right? Right, right. Yeah, even before your event, I mean, you should be hydrated. Yeah, you should be hydrated. We, we actually walk around not knowing that we're dehydrated. Uh, so we want to try to incorporate as much water as we can, but not overhydrate. Um, that's why the daily recommendation is eight. Okay, Coach, what about the people in the morning who have to have their coffee? What about coffee? And coffee is a good example. I think if you can drink it black and not bring in empty calories, right. you're doing a good job. When you start adding those fancy creamers, the Starbucks stuff, you're taking that uh, coffee that has zero calories and you just add more calories to it. So that becomes like a Big Mac. Okay. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Oh, good. Another question I have for you is, uh, how many meals a day should I have? Um, you want to space out five small meals a day, um, starting with breakfast, a snack, lunch, a snack, and dinner. Breakfast can, can it be anything from a wheat bagel to egg whites uh, to turkey bacon. Those are all healthy alternatives. Uh, if you don't have fruit or um, you know some type of protein like chicken or fish available, you can supplement with uh, a, pro a good protein powder. Now, when you're looking at protein powders, you want to look for something that's low in carbohydrates and low in sugars. Uh, so something more like three grams of carbs and either zero sugars or maybe one or two sugar grams of sugar in the protein shake. Okay. Coach, I, I have a question because I teach health and a lot of the girls, I ask them about breakfast and a lot of them just don't eat. How important in the morning is it to have breakfast? So breakfast kind of sets the precedent for your whole entire day. Typically, if you're going to eat something with a whole lot of sugar, then the next couple of hours are crucial. You're going to crave something very salty because you've had something already sweet. So, and it's just all the flip flop. If I have something salty, I'm going to crave something sweet. So you want to get a good, healthy um, meal in something that's uh, real dense in calories. That's kind of going to keep you sustained until that snack that you have. Uh, roughly an hour to two hours after your first meal. Okay. Yeah, because a, a lot of these these kids just don't want to eat breakfast. Don't eat. 
Well, and that, and also some of them don't want to eat at all. And right. You're really harming your body when you don't want to eat at all. If you're trying to lose weight, you're actually stalling out your metabolism if you don't eat. The big thing is tricking the body into burn fat. And so the more meals you eat, um, the more active your body is going to get, and we're in a fat burning mode when we do that. Another thing that a lot of my, uh, my, my athletes ask, like protein bars. Okay, people use them for snacks or, or even a meal supplement. What do you need to look for in a protein bar? Like what's good and what's not good? So those same things that we look for with when we're looking at powder, we're looking for those same things in the bars. We wanna to try to limit the carbohydrates and limit the sugars. Um, the, more, the more refined sugars, the unhealthy side it is. Also, you wanna look at the fiber. If it only has like two grams of fiber, big X. You want to have three to five grams of fiber in a protein bar. And you also want to make sure that that protein bar is a meal and not a protein bar plus a sandwich. So, right. you know, you, right. you're, you're adding calories to that when you do that. Thing. So it's just do it by itself. Correct. Okay. And another question I know a lot of people ask, and even myself, when should you shut it down? When should you stop putting food in your body? At what time? Okay, so at, at, at noon, the body starts going into kind of like a, a rest mode for the day that you've already worked. And so our metabolism kind of starts slowing down to prepare for sleep. So I'd say right around 6.30, 7 o'clock, you should stop eating. Okay, and, and you know how it is, Coach. You, you're watching Netflix or, or what Hulu, Disney+, Plus, ESPN, whatever, and a game's playing, a good movie's playing, you want to grab that bag of chips, you want to eat some cookies, eat some ice cream. How bad is that for your diet? It's bad because you're going to eat that and then you're going to go to sleep and you're not burning those calories in your sleep. You're sleeping, right? Your body's at rest at that, at that point, 6.30, 7 o'clock. And it's, it's, it started at 12 and then it's just kind of slowly that gradual, gradual fallout. And for us as coaches, it's hard because we get back from a game and we want a snack and we, right. we, need, we don't need to do that. We need to, hey, we need to sleep or eat before or right after that game. Right, okay. So even as an athlete, like after a game, uh, uh, should they put anything in their body? Like let's say they're, they're done playing at nine o'clock. I mean, what's the best thing for them to put in their body? That's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, lean, lean protein or a supplement shake. Um, if they've been doing rigorous exercises and they really need to refuel, something that's gonna be low in, a little bit lower in carbohydrates in the nighttime, like a supplement shake or something high in protein. Okay. Well, Coach, we thank you for giving us your answers on these questions and uh, we really appreciate your knowledge. And that's it. Thank you. See you next time.